Welcome, welcome, welcome to Shiloh Fire Hour. Thank you for joining us uh, on this amazing platform and this um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful program. Thank you so much for joining. And um, our apologies for not broadcasting for the past one week, but um, we thank God for life and we thank Him for what He has been doing in our lives. Amazing, amazing things. We were, we were having a program in Chitungiza from last week, uh, Sunday, and we just jumped, I believe, Thursday and Saturday. And yesterday, again, we had another program. Sunday, we had another program. But we really appreciate the Lord for His hand. We really appreciate the Spirit of God for His love and how He has demonstrated His abilities throughout the days, throughout the days. And as is our custom, we always welcome the Holy Spirit who makes everything work. And also on top of that, I really would love for you to share the broadcast. Invite someone to watch with you. Invite somebody to be part of uh, this move of the Spirit of God even as we pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We honor you. We reverence you. We glorify your name. We're excited to be here. We are truly, truly excited to be here. Glorious Father, amazing Spirit of God, we love you. We thank you. We thank you. Spirit of God, we thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. And thank you for bringing us into this place. Thank you for giving us opportunities to serve you, to honor you. Somebody pray and acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit who makes all things work. Who makes all things work. In the name of the Lord, 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 I honor you. 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 Love you, Holy Spirit. Love you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge your presence. It is you, Lord. All that we see is you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we honor you, we reverence you, we glorify your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So we, the last time we met, the last time we were here, we spoke about monitoring spirit. But um, it was something that came in between programs when we were talking about uh, the topic of faith. And we're moving from, uh, started by defining faith, moved to so many things, so many things that we touched with regards to, to faith. But uh, I believe that topic is something that we cannot exhaust in one city or we can exhaust in one month. We actually need the whole year to keep on pushing on that one um, for maximum delivery of destiny. Because faith is very, very important. Because if the Bible tells you that the just shall live by faith, it definitely stands to reason that um, faith is like breathing. Faith is like our oxygen, the fuel that pushes our life. So no matter who prophesies to you, no matter who touches you, no matter who you meet, if you do not have faith, if you do not believe, if you do not connect with faith, it will not work. It will not work. And anything that is done outside of faith or without faith, God calls it sin. God calls it sin. He calls it sin. So I want you to understand that uh, here on Shiloh Fire Hour, um, the teachings that we give you are for your improvement, your progress. Because remember the word that the Lord gave us for the month and one of the things that he highlighted was as the word of the Spirit is being pushed into your system, pushed into your life, it will bring serious improvement. Amazing, amazing, amazing improvements in your life. So uh, definitely I'll, I'll get to maybe tomorrow we'll get into prayer and um, warfare, a lot of things that we are supposed to be, to be doing with regards to praying. Uh, from where we left with regards to monitoring spirits, limitation and breaking of boundaries, the limits that the enemy would have placed on us and also the limits that people put on themselves, the limits that even human beings 
put on themselves. So as a way of saying welcome back, we are continuing with the topic of faith just for today. And then tomorrow we get into other 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 matters. So maybe maybe to uh, if I do a recap, we we'll then use the whole the whole session. The whole session with the recap. We might actually need another session for yeah yeah for the recap. You said we, we, we have question and answer? What does Shilo mean? Yeah. Is this their first time on this platform? Or maybe somebody in the comment section should explain. He, that one that one is not my business. <laughs> that one is not my business. That one is not my business. All right. <sighs> faith, 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 faith. They just shall live by faith. Let's start from there. So if, if I tell you that um, if you are to live, if you are to excel in life, this is the thing that you need. Definitely you would go after this thing. You would pursue this thing. So it also means that uh, if the Bible tells us that they just shall live by faith, the pursuit of a believer is to increase every day in his faith. And you see, the same way we grow and mature the same way we build our bodies through exercise, eating the right foods, drinking the right liquids, is the same way your spirit grows. By eating the right spiritual food and drinking the right spiritual liquids. <laughs> and somebody will be like, what are you talking about when you say drinking the right food, uh, drinking the right liquids and eating the right, the right spiritual food. Do you realize that um, many, many, many times when we are in the church, when we are in the house of God doing what we, we do, whether it's prayer, sermons, warfare, fellowship, and so on, it all comes back to one thing, the feeding of your spirit. The feeding of your spirit. Because when you mature, when you mature and you come to a place of understanding as a child of God, as a child of God, you realize there are certain things that God is no longer doing for you. Yes. You are the one that is strengthened and empowered to do them. Mm-hmm. 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 Do I, do I see have people? Okay. You eat the word of God. You drink the word of God. Or maybe let me show you um, scriptures that support what I am uh, talking about. All right. First Corinthians. Chapter number... Number 10, verse number 1, 2, 3, and 4. It says something. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you would be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That's a topic for another day. But verse number 3 says, And did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Hmm. So God gives us meat to eat and drink to drink, spiritual drink, spiritual drink. And the reason why he does that is so that we reach the place that God would have ordained for us. So you see, many people don't understand the fact that between here and where you want to be, there has to be an eating from this position so that you can travel the miles that are between here and your destiny. Alright. What am I talking about? The prophet of God is sitting under a juniper tree and an angel appears and he says, prophet, 
arise. Eat. For the journey that you are going to take is a long one. Which means the amount of food that is offered determines the journey or the journey that is supposed to be traveled will determine the amount of food that must be taken. So if you don't take in enough spiritual food, you don't take in enough spiritual drink, no matter your desires, if they don't match with what you have taken in, no, no, listen to me. It will just be daydreaming. You will just be a person who is saying, I wish I could be there, but you will not be there. You will not be there. You will not be there. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> so we need to be eating. We need to be eating. You should, do you realize the same way you have um, a schedule where you eat in the morning and you call it breakfast? You should also have your own spiritual breakfast where you know I am eating spiritual food and drinking spiritual uh, drink like this. So, I am eating the bread of life. Jesus Christ who is the word. Hmm? And remember, say, one day, because some of these things, when he is bringing them to you, he can bring them to you as um, uh, a prophetic picture of the things that are supposed to be happening to you or the thing that is supposed to be happening to you. For instance, if Jesus says, take this piece of bread, it is my body, it is my flesh, and he says, take this cup, drink it, the wine, it is my blood. You then drink, this, this thing is physical. You then eat, this thing is physical. But then the moment it enters your system, it's translated into being the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus. <laughs> literally, literally, not like I'm trying to explain something. No, this is it. You get it into your system, you know I've taken in the blood of Jesus. Now I have the life of God working inside of me. No disease can share that same spot with the blood of Jesus that has gotten into me, that DNA. But remember, this is something you bought in a shop. Or some might say, why, why can't we get the exact thing that Jesus used? Do you, re, do you think Jesus used something spiritual? It was actually bread that was bought. But it is the power of faith. Now, now I'm explaining faith. It is the power of faith that translated the physical into being the spiritual that is needed. So the journey you are supposed to take as the prophet is a physically long one. But remember, it has something to do with your spirituality. So the food you eat is physical food. But how does food of one day take you for 40 days, 40 nights? It then tells you that within the physical food, by the power of faith, he activated a spiritual component in the physical food. Because if the physical food was coming from an angel, an angel is a spirit. Uh, I don't know. So you, 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 you decide on um, achieving something. Don't begin to pursue the thing that you want to achieve. Start pursuing the kind of food that causes you to achieve what you want to achieve. The problem, the problem that you are actually having is this: is having targets and not in eating enough food that is proportionate to the targets that you have. I like it when God doesn't just promise me things. I enjoy it when he tells me how I am supposed to make those things happen. Because 
the reason the reason why some people are sick is not because there was a disease that entered they don't know the way to the city they know the city but they don't know the way to the city and you know now and you know what it takes you would not have gone for the city you would have gone for that which is needed So our fellowship is not just fellowship, it's drinking and eating. It's drinking and eating. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, what he's saying is there are vitamins that come through eating. When you eat sadza, your body doesn't know it's sadza. And I'm telling you, it then begins to suck the required vitamins. Exactly. You eat carbohydrates, there is an amount needed by your body. You eat protein, there is an amount that is needed. You take in vitamins, there is an amount needed. And when you get it into your system, the moment it gets into your system, the food gets into your system, it's translated into the needed component. Same with the word of God. As you are hearing like this, what you are hearing is the word, but the moment it enters you, what is created is the false god faith. So the word is the sadza, the faith is the vitamin. So when we, when we begin to see you running now, it's because you have the energy that came from the food. Are you realizing what I'm saying? So it's not always about saying, I have the word, I have the word. The word must be translated into something for it to work. Uh, then then, then you, 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 you see certain well-meaning Christians not, not achieving the things that they, they wanted to achieve or they would want to achieve. And they are No matter, no matter what you try to do, you are saying, ah, man of God, uh, I need empowerment for the, for, for the journey that I want to go in life. Yes. But does it come as empowerment? No. It might come as a word. And it is that word, when it get, gets into you, it's converted into something that then works. Ah. Uh, was originally in one. Let me complicate it for you. Let me complicate it for you. Let me complicate it for you. Should I? Yes. If you want uh, empowerment, eh? 17 nights, 17 days, prayer, fasting. And when you come, kill 17 goats. Yeah? Walk 17 steps. You know, the nonsense that I have met as far as preaching is concerned is when pastors try to spiritualize things by giving you know you know you know when 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 we when we say when when you say something like if you want to achieve this walk three steps uh, pray three days pray three hours 
give three dollars, sleep three people, <laughs> lie down three times and wake up. Even if I'm telling you this, this uh, like this, you feel like this is spiritual now. It's really spiritual. That's complicating things. It's just because of your mindset. God is as direct as I am telling you now that what you need is empowerment for your journey. And how does it come? When the word comes into your system, into your spirit, it's like the salsa that you ate that is then turned into vitamins. It's not on these areas like that. You see. And somebody just wants people will lie to them. No um when 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 certain great men speak concerning what the Lord has done with their lives and where they have reached with that life and they tell you the secret behind those results. You refuse, you, you deny, you say, no, 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 no. That's not the secret. Because it might sound too simple for you and you think it's not spiritual. And yet the power of the gospel is in its simplicity. It's in, it is in its simplicity, in its simplest form, broken down for you to understand. Do you realize this? That anytime you don't understand the concept, faith doesn't grow in you. When the word comes to you, the key to increasing in faith is understanding. When you understand something, okay, remember when he was t t telling us about the parable of the soul and he spoke about those that produced the results 30 fold, 60 fold and 100 fold. Do you know what was the variance? What was the difference? Simple. He says, these that then produced the results understood. And within the understanding, it had different levels. So it actually means, look at this. It actually means this. If I am producing 30, 30, 30 fold and somebody is producing 60 fold, somebody is producing 100 fold, it means all of us we understood. But our level of understanding determined the level of results. Those that did not produce the results did not understand. So any topic that you are failing to grasp is a topic that you will never have faith in and it's a topic that you will never produce results in. You want to produce results in, a, in an area, understand it first. That's how faith is built. So it's not just the word coming into your system. No, it's the word understood by you getting into your system and then it produces the vitamins called grace, the vitamins called faith, the vitamin called power. Never, never try to complicate matters when it comes to the gospel. If Jesus says, you shall speak to the mountain, don't, don't try to interpret the speaking. Just speak to the mountain. You know when he said, speak to the mountain, he meant the articulation of the conglomeration. No, 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 no. It's speaking. Simple speaking. Do you, you see, people actually come to a point where they think maybe the power of the gospel is in its complexity. Try to, dip, you, know, you know, I know, I know pastors who, yeah, uh, around, around, around. yeah, 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 yeah. Who, <laughs> when they are speaking, they just want to bring in maybe 17 complicated words in one line, thinking that's how to sound deep. No, you are not deep. You are just, you are, yeah, you are confused. You want us to applause you for big words. And yet sometimes, big testimonies are in small words. And there are big words that don't even produce small testimonies. Yes. Okay. If you were a disciple of Jesus, like you are, I'm talking about in the days of Jesus physically, and he's sitting with you, he was as direct as, whoever does not eat this bread is not worthy of me. Whoever does not eat my flesh is not worthy of me. He did not complicate it. He don't say like, I'm, I'm feeling like if I do this and then, and then he ends with the flesh. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Simple and straightforward. Simple and straightforward. He that believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also. Even greater. Does that need interpretation? You know if I believe in him, follow him, the works that he do, he does, I'll do them. 
and even greater. What does greater works mean? It means greater works. Hey, hey, hey. Some of you are like, ah, you know, maybe we just spend something when he said greater works. Greater works is great. Why do you need an interpretation there? Ah, deep revelation, Baba. No, 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 it's not deep revelation. It's just understanding. Did you understand what I have said? Yes. So then faith is built on that platform of understanding. And it's that faith now that begins to produce results. And how does the faith come? Remember Romans chapter number 10. Faith cometh by hearing. But you see, there is something that I saw uh, that is very powerful as far as the coming of the word is concerned. Do you realize the word itself when I'm speaking like this, the power within that word, like I said, when you understand it, it begins to show its power. But then when it is coming from me as a pastor to you, I have noticed from the word of God several portions in scripture where the word should not only be a word, but it should be a sound for you to produce results. Look at this. Can we have Acts chapter number 2? Acts chapter number 2. And this sound is stages. Look at this. Verse X22. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty. So the description is not it. I'm just uh, 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 after the sound. There came a sound. There came a sound. There came a sound. And the sound is from heaven. Now, the sound filled the house where they were sitting. That's it. Verse number four. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. What's speaking? Producing sound. So the sound filled the house and they were filled themselves and they speak, which means they produced a sound. Now we jump again to verse number six. Now when this was noised, sounded abroad, the multitude came together. Which means what drew the sound, remember on crossover, what drew the multitude was the sound that was coming out of them. But before it can come out of them, it came into them and then went out of them. And when it went out of them, it was noised abroad by who? It has its own power to be noised abroad. And the moment it was noised abroad, the multitude came together. Now, look at this. As the multitude came, what they had within the tongues said, we hear them speaking the great works of God. Which means they were sounding the great works. So the word there was not an instructive one. The word there was not a sermon. The word there was coming to impose the works of God through that sound. Now you read the scripture that tells us uh, about faith coming by hearing. Now look at this. You realize what the word, what God calls the word, what God calls sermons. Mm -hmm. Chapter number 10, verse number 17. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And all of us were finished at that one. We ended there to say, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And I want to hear the word. Do you realize verse number 18? He says, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Which means when God is hearing me preaching right now, he does not check the words only. He checks the sound that is moving out. It is that sound, the moment it enters your spirit, when you understand the sound, the, it links with your spirit, it creates faith. And when it has created faith, it produces results. Thank you. Thank you. The sound. Ah. Ah. Anyway, we are just trying to, you know, we are coming back 
uh, to resume Shilo Fire Hour, so I have to continue on, on faith. But I want you to understand this. If you can hear the sound, faith can be created. And when faith has been created, power has been given. And when power has been given, the journey can be taken. Reason why we are still where you are right now, you have not heard anything from heaven. So it says, a sound from heaven, a sound from them. So when the sound comes into your system from heaven, it was also to come out of your system to the situation. Ah, no. I wish I had people who can understand. So this is the situation I'm facing. Do you know what I must do? I don't focus on the situation. I focus on the sound that is coming from heaven. The moment the sound comes from heaven into me, it has no power yet. I release my faith by my saying. This is why he said, what thing soever you believe, you want things whatever you desire. When you pray, believe. In other words, when you are praying, something must be going on inside. You then say unto this mountain, and it hears you. Why? Because the sound you are releasing is not your sound, but it is the sound that you have trapped from heaven. Okay. Like X2, the sound came from heaven, yes. and the sound came from them. Yes. So it is from heaven to you, and from you to the situation, and then you begin to see changes in the physical. And one of the reasons why people have said so many things and they have not seen results is because they have sounded their own sound, which is not powerful. But if you can connect with the sound of heaven, I'm teaching you faith right now. I might try to explain this to you and explain that, explain that, help you with that, try this, hold that. But listen to this. As simple as it is, Sound from heaven and sound from you. So, this is what I do. In the place of prayer, when you are praying, it's not always about you asking God for things. That's faith now. It's about you hearing the sound from him so that you know what to say so that the situation can change. This book is paper. What gives it power is when you hear what is behind this book. So you open the Bible, by his stripes you were healed. If you keep on saying, by stripes I'm healed, by stripes I'm healed, by stripes I'm healed, you might die saying it. You have been connected to an ability of God of saying by his stripes we are healed or we were healed. But then you have just read this like paper. Get to the spirit of the word. Do you know the same statement, by his stripes you were healed, is different from this statement, by his stripes you were healed. Because so long it is still on paper, it's not yours, but when it has become a sound from heaven, and you voice it, it then begins to produce results. This is where prayer comes in now. You don't pray to ask God for things, you pray to receive a sound that you will then utter. <laughs> When, when, when we are like Stephen, remember, the Bible says he was full of faith and power. And Stephen, full of faith and power. Let me look for the verse. I believe it's chapter number six of the book of Acts. <laughs> for those that are waiting for a miracle to happen, let me show you how miracles happen. Chapter number six, verse number eight, Acts. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did. Hey. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did. He did not say, and Stephen, full of faith and power, asked. Stephen, full of faith and power, requested. Do you realize in the Bible, we actually have a verse which allows us and commands us and actually admonishes us that when you have such a gift you don't wait for God to perform miracles it is actually called the gift of working of miracles which means when you need one you can work it out and Stephen let me let me put my name there this is how I practicalize these things and Aldrich full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people And then he tells you faith comes by hearing. 
So it means Stephen received that faith not by spending days in a mountain. He spent days hearing something. He was hearing. If you keep hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, hearing it, faith cometh. You keep hearing it, the problem is you are hearing the wrong things. And you are hearing the wrong people. The wrong stuff. You are on social media hearing the wrong people. They are telling you of things that will not work in your life. And yet, oh my God. God is also saying something. Remember what he says. Who has believed our report? It's not just believing. There is a report. There is a report. And the pride that you have to see in the prophet. He did not say who has believed God's report. He said who has believed our report and unto whom is the end of God. So the end of God is, is, is revealed when you believe our report. So there is a man who reports and there is a hand that is revealed. So I'm here as a reporter. And you should be the believer. And between us there must be a hand that must be revealed. So the reason why you don't have money is not because you are not pursuing business interests. No, you have headless. Your ears headless. Your ears headless. You can go for 17 one-on-ones, 25 one-on-ones, 72 delivery sessions until you begin to hear. <laughs> Let me close. Let me close. So I open my ears to hear on a topic. The more I hear, 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 faith cometh. And when a faith comes, it doesn't have to be dormant sitting in me, no. Stephen, full of faith, did, did. I begin to do when faith comes, which means any faith that leaves all responsibility to God is an irresponsible faith. <laughs> Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Maybe maybe I'll close with this one. Mm. <sighs> Give me um Matthew four Mark four verse twenty four. Mark 4, verse 24. Mark 4. Mark 4, verse 24. Have you put it on the screen? Oh, you are behind me. <laughs> Maybe we start from verse 23. He says, If any man have ears to hear, let him what? So, are you telling me there are other ears that cannot hear? Because saying ears to hear are ears for something else. They are for hearing. But he will tell you, there are men that have ears and they are not for hearing, they are for other things. And the kind of hearing he's talking about here, you realize it's beyond the way people hear. Verse 24 explains it all. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. With what measure you met, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. Which means the less you have is because of the less you had. The more you hear, the more is given. So how are you given things in the kingdom? You are given when you are being told. And when something has been said and you hear, that's how you are given. So when you say, God, give me a miracle, he says something. And when you believe that report, he reveals his end. So if I want changes in my finances, God must give me a word for my finances. David knew it one day and he said, speak unto me lest I be like them that go down into the pit. Which means when you see your life going down, you are word bankrupt. You have heard less words or you have not heard at all.
tell me more about finances, you are about to move into a next level of finances. Because the more you, you have a hunger for the word concerning an area, you are now growing in that area. You are drinking the spiritual drink, you are eating the spiritual meat of that area. You begin to see your pockets being filled, not because you have changed the way you work, you have already been working and not getting anything. You have improved your hearing. Pastor Aldridge is speaking, Shilo Fire Hour is coming, you could not have been on this platform had this word been my word. But you know God speaks through this guy. So every time he's hearing, I must be present. When he's saying something, this actually tells you the reason why you should never miss church. is because every time you appear in Zion, where the law is released, according to Isaiah 2, 2 he says, and I shall instruct them in my law. So I release the word from Zion. The more the word is coming, the more you are increasing in power, increasing in faith. And the more you are increasing in faith, you are being given. So how do you receive from God? You receive from God by hearing from God. And how do you hear from God? What shield of fire are you? Ah, somebody is waiting for a vision that he has never seen. Somebody is waiting for a voice he has never heard. You are hearing the voice right now. Thank God for Facebook. Thank God for YouTube. Thank God for TikTok. Thank God for Instagram. At least these are the means. Do you know if Apostle Paul was here, he was going to use all available means to speak to you. That's how passionate those guys were. You know, one day I was, I was troubled when I read the scripture in the book of Acts where it says, and he disputed with them for the span of two years and he filled the whole of Asia with the word of God. No deliverance, no healing. All that followed, the deliverances and the healings that followed were as a result of the word that was sown into Asia in two years. How do you feel the whole of Asia in two years except you were using every available means? How does it spread in two years like that? And you are just one guy. Even the verse that we read in chapter number 10, he says their sound has entered the whole earth. Their words have filled the earth. It means their available means God was using it to reach the people. If there is a book, it had to be written for, so that the word can reach. Two years, Asia was filled. You have been born again how many years? At your office, they don't know you are a Christian. For 17 years, you have been in the same office. They can't hear the word of God from you. Why? You don't have it. You don't have it. In two years, Paul had filled the whole of Asia. You, in 20 years, you have not filled your office. It's your office that is filling you. They are feeling something into, into it. Yeah. So this is how we grow. Remember, the same way your body needs food, your spirit also needs nourishment. Eat spiritual meat, drink spiritual water. And when you do that, when you do that, things are being given. You are growing. You are growing. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should continue with this tomorrow again. Um, and for, 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 for those that have been joining, repeat this session maybe once or twice before you join us tomorrow again. I feel like I was alone in this one. <laughs> we should rebroadcast for people to join again and say what is wrong with my man you are yeah yeah so this is how the most high works he is not complicated what he tells you comes to pass do you believe is the question i do believe exactly begin to experience the word that he has spoken. Your faith makes it work. And when it comes, it is converted into the power that you need to take the journey. My prophet, stand up from that tree. Eat for the journey ahead is a long one. So where you are going to reach, if you are ever going to reach, is determined by the fuel that you are going to receive through the eating of the spiritual meat in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't forget to support the platform. Don't forget also to connect with your altars and be part of uh, 
the spiritual energy that is shed on Shiloh Fire Hour through your giving, through your sacrifices, through your tithings, and so on. And as you do that, I know the Lord will bless you and increase you greatly. Increase you greatly. Let me for a minute just pray for that offering, maybe that, that gift, that sacrifice that you have. Father, in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord, I thank you for those that are watching and those that are connecting through giving. Spirit of God, have your way in their lives. Connect them to your energy that flows in this ministry. So much more. The abundance of the sea. The abundance of the clouds. Spirit of God, may it be converted unto them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So use those numbers that are showing on your screen uh, to give unto the Lord. Tomorrow we are here, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. We are here, 7 o'clock sharp. We are here. And the Lord bless you, increase you, and cause his face to shine upon you. I am Pastor Aldrich. I love you so much. I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.